Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here. Welcome home to the channel. Today, I'm at the Masano Auto Group here in Pennsylvania, and you've got to see this amazing facility that they have inside. Now, I'm here to check out the beautiful G-Wagon 4 Squared, but before we get off into that vehicle, which by the way, is one of my dream machines, we're gonna step inside here and talk to the owners of this place and just see how amazing it is. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And for returning subscribers, tap that bell and you'll get notified when new content is uploaded. So we are in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, yes. uh, about an hour and a half outside of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, we're a, a third generation auto group. This is my dad, yes. uh, John Masano. I'm Johnny Masano, yeah. and uh, the name of our company is Tom Masano Auto Group. Gotcha. Started by uh, his dad, my grandfather, after uh, World War II. Yep. And uh, we are currently in our auto park. Yes. Um, and there's a lot to see. <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, as you can see, we have a, um, a fixation with uh, <laughs> foliage and uh, <laughs> yes. plants. Where does that come from? Um, it, uh, this actually came from, um, inspiration from this was maybe about four years ago, five years ago, where were we were in uh, Philadelphia. Yes. for looking at, uh, what was the name of the company? Uh, it was at the Philadelphia Navy Yard, and they completely transformed the Navy Yard, uh, which was old buildings and facilities. And we had this facility, which is 250,000 square feet. Wow. An old brass factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we kind of modeled it after that and repurposed everything with plants, everything in here we owned already. It, wow. Uh, yeah, we don't uh, throw anything away. Um, this used to be uh, Baldwin Brass, uh, which was a uh, brass factory. Uh, in 2008, uh, they shut down and then a, another company took over. They couldn't quite make it work and they moved their operations down to Mexico. And uh, about uh, three blocks away from here, we have uh, new car franchises, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Ford, and Lincoln. Um, and we've always been uh, big into uh, used or pre-owned uh, vehicles. Um, so this space became available. Uh, like I said, it's 250,000 square feet. Wow. And we um, refurbished it and turned it into an automotive wonderland. Now, right over here, we're partnered with uh, Mannheim, which is the uh, largest auto auction in the world. Uh, once a month, um, we uh, actually host a uh, dealer only auction and uh, the cars that we run through there are all the cars that have not passed our uh, inspection process. Uh, we stand behind our vehicles and if it uh, doesn't pass, uh, we get rid of it, we wholesale it, we don't retail it. There you go, perfect. Another interesting point is you'll see these units all over the place, they're waste oil heater. So this entire facility is heated by waste oil. So spring, summer, and fall, we uh, change the oil and we obviously store the oil. And then in winter time, this whole place is heated by burning the waste oil that we have. That's it's awesome. part of our reuse, repurpose, recycle mm -hmm. mantra that we have in this place. Here's a little interesting item. Uh, this is my dad's uh, ledger from 1956 or 1950 and that recorded the uh, profit margin he sold on pre-owned vehicles. So this is like our display case of uh, the time machine back here. But it's interesting to see, it also grounds you to see what needs to be done to how to make this place uh, economically viable. Again, as you can see, the vastness of this facility and uh, the fact that these trucks are so large mm -hmm. and we're fortunate enough to have a facility like this. So we installed the lifts, heavy truck lifts, uh, the lights, the life safety in here. Funny thing with this, we really never advertise this shop, uh, but if you build it, they will come. And all these commercial vehicles came in. And again, you get the vast, the, the vast, this of this building and also this the vehicles mm -hmm. and then uh, a lot of uh, we work with uh, all different types of businesses from uh, local mom and pop shops 
to uh, all the way companies up on the national uh, level with Amazon, FedEx, uh, and Comcast. We don't want. <laughs> Let's hide. <laughs> okay. No, no one's in there. The car. <laughs> We don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that. But hey, you know, we, we need it. <laughs> uh -huh. The beauty of this place too is we have the space. So when they come up, when anybody comes up an idea and wants to try something, incubate an idea, mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, let's try it over there. If it doesn't work, it's no problem. We didn't build a facility. We have it right here. But here is our. Not many people have this. Our uh, tunnel. <laughs> yeah. I, I call it the magic tunnel. The magic tunnel, the Wonderland tunnel. And we'll just kind of walk up here and wow. uh, uh, see that now this is the brass factory. They connected two buildings to each other. And before this was uh, kind of, in a sense, decorated, it was a cold, ugly tunnel. Yes. But it transformed uh, with us saving all our banners us saving all our old signage around the area. It transformed into a beautiful mm -hmm. tunnel. And a lot of the uh, stuff hung up is from like old sales promotion, Mercedes-Benz summer sales event. That's when we uh, first opened up this place back in uh, 2018. And again, it looked nothing like this. Think of <laughs> literally an abandoned factory building uh, is, what it, uh, is what it was. <laughs> yeah. And and if you do turn around, that was a, a sign that the lower Thomas Animal, that was a sign from an old dealership. So instead of throwing that away, we repurposed it, brought it in here. We're fortunate enough to retail these cars, but some of, they're some of the most beautiful cars in the world. Mm -hmm. and if you just kind of take a look at this, if you can hear that background music yes. playing. Yes. We have uh, in here, we have Keith Haring reproductions. Keith Haring was from Reading, Pennsylvania, where we are. I didn't know that. We have Roy Lichtenstein over there. Wow. And then we have the great Andy Warhol over here. Yes. So these are beautiful cars, beautiful music. Beautiful paintings. Listen to this. Quinn asked for a better cue. With yeah. His music. <laughs> but uh, we kind of have one of everything up here. Uh, we got the uh, Maybach GLS, uh, Lincoln um, X4M, a bunch of SLs, Baby Bronco, uh, Mercedes Benz Electric, and then right over there we have a my dream car G63. <laughs> Uh, four by four squared. So they pulled out all the stops here at Masano Auto Group for me. Where you can see the carbon fiber inside the bonnet and it looks beautiful. This is the G-Wagon on steroids, I want to call it. Huge, souped up, beefed up, massive suspension. Look at those calipers, AMG red. They are gorgeous. You got ventilated discs. This thing is just, look at this. This is a suspension that you really, really, really need on this vehicle. I mean, I'm sure that this G-Wagon four squared could do a lot of off-roading. Carbon fiber up top for the marker lights. Fun fact, those marker lights are required by law in the United States up top because this vehicle is so wide. You have to have those lights in the front and the back. That is awesome. You have the four by four squared logo back there. This recognize it guys is not your normal G wagon not by far Burmeister audio Al Cantera you have the stitching all the stuff that you're used to in a luxury AMG product including the huge screen and all your dials with real functioning buttons guys not fake it's great Al Cantera up top you do have a sunroof it's not panoramic but we don't really care and then when you step up top here you can see that this is carbon fiber also, and that it has lights that the dealership cannot activate for you uh, by law. But when you buy this vehicle, you can take it someplace and get those lights activated. Really, really cool. We swing over here and we try to open up this massive door and it is heavy. You will see that the rear camera is inside the vehicle. So you never have to worry about it getting filthy 
from when you're taking this thing in mud, mud puddles or whatever the hell you're gonna do with it. Back here you have a speaker. From enhanced audio, you have lots of room, those seats fold down. Beautiful, beautiful vehicle indeed. And then when you close this door, you even have a little carbon fiber back there on the handle. How nice. Quilted stitching, magnificent. When you close this heavy door and you smash your dealer tip tag, you really don't want to do that, by the way. But when you close the door, ah, it gives you that reassurance that you actually did something on a $330,000 automobile. The tailpipes are from the side, and when you fire this thing up, you will hear uh, the roar of this big twin turbo V8, especially when you turn on the exhaust from that button and you give it some revs. That lets you know that you are in fact in a G-Wagon 4x4 squared. But as well as it looks on the outside, we got to take this thing for a little test drive, guys. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> I know. It's a little animation. crazy how high up we are. Yes. Uh, we got the sun. We got a sunroof. Look at that. I figured out how to open it up first, first try. Oh, it shifts nicely. Mm -hmm. Shifts really nice. You can definitely tell this is an AMG performance machine just by the way that it just behaves. Oh, and the seats are hugging me. So whenever we turn, the seat is like, uh, you feel that, Johnny? Yeah, it's giving you a uh, bear hug almost. It's keep, <laughs> keeping us in check. Yeah. Nice. This thing has blind spot monitoring. I like that. Certainly need it. Yes, <laughs> as big as it is. I know. Yeah. Obviously, we're carbon fibered out. Everywhere. It really moves. The window sticker said, uh, Yeah, what is what is the price of this thing, John? Price is uh three hundred and fifty-three thousand seven hundred and eighty-five dollars. Whoa. It is a uh, four liter V eight bi turbo engine. Okay. Five hundred and seventy seven horsepower stock and six hundred and twenty seven pound feet of torque that's a lot stock. of torque that, that torque is. is impressive i see it has the burnmeister audio but in a vehicle like this who really cares about audio and stuff like that we really want to just experience this thing wow know. this thing moves <laughs> Man, <laughs> it moves it does again you know just imagine this as a big old ugly desolated factory that that, that no more yeah <laughs> no. they could have ended up uh, being demolished but if you look at the carbon footprint we saved half the carbon footprint of refurbishing this versus building new yes. and we do keep that intact look we're neither an alarmist or a denier but we do something we do mm -hmm. something uh, so that's that's what we pride ourselves on. Here's a Kenny Scharf. He's a famous uh, graffiti artist from uh, New York City. I think Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn, maybe. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. Album room. Don't really know why we have it. I think someone, uh, one, uh, one of our uh, teammates, one day just said, "Hey, this would be really cool," and we uh, did it. Uh, a lot of the albums are from his generation. Well, that's what albums are. So we picked the 50 of the greatest album covers uh, out there. And if you look, they are from the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And we have these iconic album covers all over. And we have 49 old school albums in here. Mm -hmm. And we only have one youngster that we let in this room and that happens to be the great taylor swift okay. because she is from here right here no, yeah right here uh -huh. wow. so we honor her by putting her in with these greats but i think she's bigger than all of them i now. know yeah 
<laughs> she grew up uh, five minutes away from here, and then uh, before, or just about when she uh, entered high school, that's when she moved down to, uh, was it Nashville. Nashville? Yes. I believe. So everybody knows her and her uh -huh. family from this area. Wow. This is cool. Yes. This was repurposed too. This was an old display from Mercedes-Benz that they, this is how we used to configure cars in front of customers. So after it had its useful life, what we did is come on here and uh, the gentleman downstairs loaded in some software. So we kind of can pick exactly what you want. And here it is with the technology today. We'll bring down, is that Cleedence, Cleedence Clearwater into the cars? Great. Okay, there we go. <laughs> These gentlemen bring the cars in here, take pictures of them and uh, look at this room and listen, keep this between us, but that's a, a vinyl brick wall. Don't I let anybody, <laughs> just don't let anybody know that. But you know what else too, if you even spin around, it's got all this old factory look, even yes. you're entering building 12, beautiful lights here. So it's all good. All now we're entering our car tunes room, uh -huh. cartoons. And again, this is their all working facilities. You see a car coming through, they're for storage. Every room has its purpose. But then we also add a little, uh, wait, what's going on over there? We <laughs> do, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a little Felix the Cat for you yeah. over here. So we're, this is kind of the fun thing about this place. Yeah. We all kind of get an idea and we just say, all right, let's just do it. So mm -hmm. we have a great, artist and he's doing a scooby-doo uh mural because just like you're doing as soon as you see that you start smiling yes. yeah and that's what yes. we want uh-huh now johnny told me that the artist might be here today was he able i to think oh, wait i think he's up so oh, i want to meet that guy i don't want to yell into the microphone robbie are you here robbie nice to meet you. you're the artist i am look at this outfit you do fantastic work man Thank love you so your much. work it's beautiful yeah i'm trying hard you notice the accent? He's from across the pond. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, we caught a meeting. We Just caught him in the middle of lunch. <laughs> uh, you'll see, uh, I want to get a little closer to the, the mic here too. You'll see his work from here to Felix, to Dragon Ball Z, to there, uh, to the, uh, I can't, I'm going to keep that secret, the other thing. But uh, Robbie's just kind of working his way around this place, putting smiles on people's faces. Still uh, plenty more to see. Uh, over there, we have uh, <laughs> Shenron from Dragon Ball Z for some reason. I don't know how he made his way here, but I uh, did. Someone uh, suggested it. We have an appropriate car in front of it. Yeah, too. Z06 Z06, yeah. it would be, uh, if it was a GTR, we'd have something going. So this room is appropriately named the Tiffany's room. What the heck? <laughs> so we have we have one of the largest inventories of Maybachs in the uh, country, entire mm -hmm. country here. Entire right country, here. do a lot of business online. Um, just kind of click by. Uh, a car is a little bit more complicated than that, but that's why we have uh, cell phones to do um, all the work. Videos, virtual test drives, you name it, we'll do it. Kind of another interesting thing, we repurposed everything. So we had these big trays on top of the roof. So our crew brought them down here and they lined them up nice and straight. And for about a month, we're looking at it, trying to decide what to do. And then finally, we came up with the idea of putting the most iconic shot in the, the world, Beatles. the Beatles yep. from Abbey Road. There we go. So wow. <laughs> isn't that great? So you can kind of portray who you want to be. You can stand between them and uh, it's great. And a lot of people take their shots here as they're walking across there. <laughs> so that's great. So we have Harvest Moon Aquaponics Farm right here. And aquaponics is the process of fish providing the fertilizer for feeding the plants. And this technology or this process has been around since the Aztecs, Incas, Mayans, Egypt, Mayans, and, and Egyptians. Yeah, when you think about it, um, anyone familiar with fish tanks, literally is just a big fish tank. 
this uh, planted uh, planted aquarium. Um, so in here we have our uh, fish tanks. Uh, how many koi do you think we have? I think we have about 50 in here. 50 in and here. We have about uh, uh, 35 in the other one. And these fish are in here. They get fed. They do their thing. And then the water gets transferred out and into the other room. Now, if we really wanted to complete the cycle, we could put tilapia in here. But listen. We don't really have the heart to, uh, <laughs> to bop them. <laughs> we don't have the heart to, to kill the tilapia. Uh -huh. So what we're going to do is, is these uh, koi are really grown up. We're going to have a neat display in the auditorium. Neat display, maybe sell them, who knows. So this is kind of a self-sufficient closed loop system here. And uh, the water's constantly turning. We don't really have to add any water at all. So then the water gets uh, sent to the other room and the uh, other water gets cycled back. And you'll see what that makes. Yeah. And, and by the way, we use no chemicals, no pesticides at all. It's all natural minerals. Uh, this was really a fun thing that we just kind of said, why not? Let's give it a shot. And uh, indoor uh, aquaponics farm. So <laughs> now we're right in the middle. We just harvested, uh, had a lot of lettuce and kale harvest there. That's why we're kind of down. We give the uh, produce to all our coworkers and then we donate it to the um, uh, helping harvest food pantries around the area. Mm -hmm. So this is absolutely and, uh, one thing I probably before you get into that our biggest discovery is that we have uh, from this whole thing is that we have a lot of great cooks uh, oh, yes. within the company. Yeah. And, and one of the things they're best at cooking at is kale here. Yeah. And, and kale you're like, eh, but they add olive oil, garlic, everything. Johnny said we discovered a lot of cooks. But, but this is great. Go this ahead. is where the uh, water flows oh. into, gets pumped in here, um, all free flowing. Uh, because there's no uh, soil, it takes uh, less energy from the plant uh, to grow uh, to grow roots. Yes. Um, whole room is uh, climate and temperature controlled, uh, so it's almost like uh, um, every day is the first day of spring, yeah. yes. and uh, there's no uh, rainy day drought. Uh, and then even though there's a lot of uh, water here. Uh, there is uh, no waste from traditional farming because it all gets uh, recycled and put back into the loop. It doesn't go into the ground and get uh, evaporated. And if you Sorry, look, but. there's tomatoes right here, oh, wow. growing tomatoes yeah. uh -huh. right there. We have cucumbers growing there, cucumbers, you really look. And then we have a lot of cherry tomatoes growing here. And uh, this is our nursery. This is where it starts out. Interesting, these are red maple trees. We're growing trees in here now. Whoa. So here's, they're growing, we're gonna grow them, and then obviously, we're gonna show you where we put the, um, put the saplings, which is neat, which is gonna be the last bit of our tour. Yeah. Uh, but again, really took an a, a, uh, interest, a keen interest in environmental, uh, what can we do? Especially being a car dealership, what mm -hmm. can we do? So they spend, our, this is our nursery, then they spend time in the uh, four foot deep water culture. The beauty of this, look, no pesticides, no nothing. Wow. I mean, you don't have to uh -huh. wash it, you don't have to do yeah. anything. Here, it's so good. <laughs> Please try some. <laughs> yeah. There's my dad and uncle. Kind of cool cats from the 50s and 60s, right? Well dressed. Well dressed. And, uh, <laughs> A lot of our uh, co-workers, I don't say too many, because I'm getting uh, up there, have been uh, employed here longer than I've been on this planet. Wow. <laughs> so a uh, ton to learn from, uh, yeah. from them, um, for me personally. And then we thought of, through COVID, we were incubating a lot of ideas from the uh, aquaponics, and of course, getting this place all squared away. Mm -hmm. And then one time Johnny and I were at a meeting, and. San Antonio. Believe so. And they uh, gave us water in a carton. And we have a property, it's 20 minutes away with 
a lot of natural springs on it that are historic springs too. And we kind of looked at each other. We had this aha moment. So we thought, why not us start our own spring water in a box? Let's just yeah. bring back the curtain. This is the, uh -huh. this, this is the packaging equipment. Uh, we're gonna install it probably in 30 days in another room wow. in our auto park or automotive wonderland. So again, as we talked about, it's so neat. We can sit around and brainstorm ideas and say, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it and we have the facilities and uh, we have a great talented team. We can kind of do whatever we want. Yeah. So in, uh, I think it's this week, we're getting two big 15,000 gallon tanks delivered here. And as Johnny said, we partnered with Waterbox. They have the knowledge and the expertise of all this. We're providing the building and the equipment. And uh, you'll see here, the big uh, water tanks are gonna go here. We are set up for three lines of water. That machine can produce a hundred cartons a minute. Mm -hmm. So we expect to be up to three lines a minute. Has nothing to do with automobiles. No, nope, nothing <laughs> at all. Here we are. <laughs> and then it's so neat because over there's our loading dock. So we can have, here's another loading dock. This was all part of this facility that we can just go into. And we're having fun with it too. Yes. We're really mm -hmm. having fun with it. And I think when you have fun with it, your mind kind of can create and let go. So this room will be done. And of course, we're going to invite you back because every week this place is changing. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are so tempting with these uh, four squares. Jeez. Wow. Well, thank you guys so much. Great. Thank, thank you. you for stopping by. Yeah, thank you. It was great. Thank John. you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. And I'm going to let Ben handle the rest.